person that knows all about sold out shows is joining us now though now you might recognize him from many many year ago what year was that oh 2011 oh my goodness 2011. nine years ago and this is of course the one and only ronan park hello ronan hello how are you both oh, Hi. Oh, I took a breath in that I didn't think we could hear you, but we can. Where are you? You look very, um, very nice and chilled and relaxed. I am. I'm just at home, which is where I'm. I'm from. Um, yes. So I'm chilling. I'm enjoying the sunshine. Oh, fantastic! And we mentioned there, obviously, you, you rising to fame back in 2011, uh, nine, nearly ten years ago. You did your audition for Britain's Got Talent and was the runner-up that year. Um, how how did that change your life all those years ago? I think uh, I mean I was 12. When I was on the show, and I was always just a little kid that love to sing and I never had any expectations going into into the show and then it literally was this overnight change and everybody says your life changes overnight after a, a talent show and I always find that a really <laughs> cringy thing to say but it, it was very true everything just changed um you know it was I was getting to do what I every single day of my life and I'm, I'm really grateful for that so yeah it was it was a case of just singing in my bedroom to singing on stages in front of in, in front of people, um, which was a real change for me. So, yeah, lo lots has changed since that. <laughs> changing though, you kind of grown up in front of the public, haven't you? How's that been for you? You know, I think it's been really, really, really nice. There's always this question of, you know, people saying, should young people be on these talent shows? But I think that it's it helped me mature a lot and quickly. And I, I'm really grateful for that because of the industry that I'm choosing to be in. You have to be mature and, and grown up to be in this industry and have thick skin. And I think from doing that from such a young age, that really taught me to just grow up and, and be mature and roll with the punches. So and I think it was a real benefit. And, and sometimes it could be when you have that fame so early that you change career paths, but you haven't. In fact, you've gone from strength to strength with your music. Your voice is incredible. And, you know, you keep making these fantastic songs. Um, what is the ultimate for you? Because I've heard some of your songs, you know, and you, you love Gaga. Uh, you are a big fan of Lady Gaga. Uh, you also like your musical theatre, though. What? would you prefer to go into if you had the choice you're even presenting at the moment on your youtube channel i mean i think that i've always put so much pressure on trying to find one particular lane but i think when you're so passionate about um music and performing there's so many lanes that you can go go down and i think i've just decided that it's like anything that's going to make me happy and that i'm going to enjoy i'm going to do and at this age, you know, I'm 21 and I've experienced so much from, from 12 years old, but there's still so much more to experience. So when it comes to musical theatre or pop music or um, presenting, you know, there's so many things that will help me grow as a performer and as an artist. I'm just going to take on as, as many things as I can. <laughs> and the songs that you, that you write and that you're performing at the moment, especially the ones that you're creating yourself, they've got a very mature heart to them. So how do you go about writing a song like that well so so my most recent album which i guess was released in mm, uh end of 2018 i think um <laughs> uh that was that was all other songwriters that came in and, and did that so i'm only really focused on songwriting now but the songs that were on my album at that time that was all everything that i connected to so, and I think I think that's what music is all about. You want to be able to connect to the songs and to the lyrics and everything. You want it to make you feel a certain type of way. And as an artist, you want people to listen to it and feel a certain way that you want them to kind of re relay the words and, and the meanings to their own experiences. Um, so that's, I guess, the same way that I look when I write songs. So that's really what, what it's about for me is I always want it to make people feel a certain kind of way. I want them to, you know, experience their own feelings in the song. I want everybody to relate to it. And that was, you know, with, with my most recent album, it was all a completely gender neutral album because I feel it's really important that people get to um, 
connect with it in their own way. I think a lot of the time people can, you know, add genders to songs, which is great. You know, some of the biggest songs have obviously got genders yeah. in there, but I think that it's really important that people just, without, without this kind of instant, oh, this is who it's about, you want, to, you want people to feel their own kind of way about it. I have to say I've been thinking about kind of musicians and songwriters during lockdown and and how that might affect them and their work going forward. Have you felt that when you've been writing during lockdown? Um, it's been a very interesting time as I'm sure it has been for so many performers. I was supposed to be going on a, a UK and US tour that has all been cancelled and then there were lots of European gigs in there as well and they've all all been cancelled so it's been a really tough time as I'm sure it has been for every performer really um mm -hmm. but I think this this time has also been a really nice time to reflect and 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 think about what you want to do and what makes you happy and it's been a, a great chance for me to really prepare for next year and figure out where I want to go, what I want to be doing, what kind of music I want to make and what lane I want to be going down or numerous lanes I want to be going. And I think that's been, it's been a nice preparation time for me personally. And it hasn't completely stopped you performing because no. come this Saturday, you are going to be doing Salford Pride. You're performing at Salford Pride's virtual pink picnic. Are you excited? I can't wait. It's it's great. I'm so happy to see. I think so many people, especially in the LGBTQ plus community, I think so many people have felt that with everything that's going on, you know, Pride Month is not the same as it usually is. But at the same time, there's so much to still be fighting for. And it's still so incredibly important that we celebrate this month and we use this month to really talk about the topics that we need to be speaking about. So I'm so pleased that Salford Pride have gone ahead with doing a virtual Pride. Um, it's something very different, but I'm so excited to be involved and I can't wait for everyone to see it. They've got some amazing performers lined up. So I'm... Do you know what time you're on at all? I have no idea. <laughs> we'll just ring you and say you're on now. Go for it. <laughs> I have no idea, but I think it goes on from about 6 p.m. Yeah. It does. Uh, I hope you know what you're singing, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> you know what I still want to see, and I don't know if it's even physically possible to do, but I'd like to see, now that you're all grown up, I'd like to see you doing a duet with your former self. A bit like what Alan Jones did with himself a few <laughs> years back with Walking in the Air. I think you should try doing that, Ronan. Yeah, I've never thought about that. That would actually be really fun. <laughs> <laughs> I've also done a duet with myself in different guises as well. That always kind of works. Have you done a duet with yourself? You know I can't sing. <laughs> this is a standing joke. I just can't sing, Ronan. So, you know, yeah. You can't lovely voice yeah in in the shower yeah. um going back to to your voice um how would you say it has developed over the years yeah as your style changed uh, like and the, the artists that you like i know i mentioned gaga before i know you've always been a fan but um have you seen differences um i've definitely noticed a difference in my voice in general just because of you know my voice de developing as it's you as it does when you yeah. grow old but my my music my interests have never really changed i grew up with song music that was always my my go-to that was what i listened to when i was growing up my mum always had soul music playing in the house and i always feel that whenever i make music i always want there to be an element of soul in everything that i do because i just think it's such a beautiful a beautiful um style of music and and i think as well i always have wanted music that i create i want it to speak to people and i want people to be able to relate to the words or to the song um everybody goes through certain experiences in their lives and i really like the idea i think music is really all about people connecting so that's always been my kind of incentive when creating music i want people to be able to connect to it and that's never really changed so i guess the only thing that's changed from when i was on the show is just my voice getting a bit deeper <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just how uh, well known around the world you are. I mean, as much as you're a homegrown talent to us, and obviously you've, you've hailed from the program Britain's Got Talent, you are loved around the world. And we've got some messages um, 
from various people. We've got one, let's bring them in individually. Yeah, from there. Let's bring that in, first of all. And uh, we've got somebody that says they loved the last album, Ronan. Oh, thank you so much. We had somebody just before that that said something as well. Where was that? No, no, no. <laughs> so Axel. Axel said, what did Axel say? Absolutely marvellous. And oh. uh, so we've got so many comments. If we did all of them, we'd be at all. I know. Well, you have performed all over the world, mm. haven't you? Uh, where has been your favourite place to actually perform live? Oh, um, you know, I, I did my first Pride last year. Um, and then I, I ended up doing a European Pride tour last year. And it was the first time I ever even attended a Pride, let alone performed at one. Um, and the, the feeling there and the whole experience was so special. And I think because, you know, being out and being very, very proud and, and just kind of experiencing that for the first time and, and being on a stage where there's just so much love and there's no judgment and there's no there's you know it's just it's pure love and everybody's just having a great time and, and celebrating i think the prides have been so special to me because it's just been a really amazing moment to stand on a stage and be completely yourself and not feel scared or worried that you know there's going to be certain people in the audience that aren't going to accept you or they're not going to quite like certain things everybody's so accepting and everybody's so happy to be there and that's i think that's such a special moment for everybody that is involved in prides so i do i i love my prides i have to say <laughs> and why wouldn't you absolutely why wouldn't you and of course you're doing the, the virtual one this saturday yes and it, it's all going to be amazing isn't it we will be tuning in definitely so uh, we're well, very excited if we when we come out of lockdown what have you got planned anything that we should know about so I'm hoping to tour next year. So my tour that we're planning this year, I'm working on rescheduling it for next year. So hopefully next summer will be a big tour um, in the UK, um, around some places in Europe, so in the US, which is quite um, different for me because I haven't ever performed in the US before. I've recorded, I've traveled there, but I've never performed there. Um, so I'm hoping to reschedule everything that was planned in the UK this year um, for next year. And then I'll be recording some music next year. Uh, I'm planning to go out to the US to uh, record some more music. So that will all be rescheduled for next year. So hopefully next year we'll be busy. Um, I'm also working with a new musical theatre agent. So hopefully you'll see me <laughs> in some musical theatre productions. So oh. I just... Oh, we love our musical theatre. It's all very exciting. But before you go, I do have to ask you that today it was announced that Britain's Got Talent final isn't going to have an audience this year for the first time because, of course, of the effects of COVID. Well, that's going to be what, Robinson, yeah, so. what, what would that have been like for you if you hadn't had an audience back then? Honestly, it would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> So nerve-wracking the judges there, let alone the time. So I think it's going to be great for the contestants. <laughs> and if they invited you back to do a, like a Champions of Champions scenario, would you go back? Um, I was in contact with them uh, last year, which was amazing. It was great to be back in contact with them. Um, I've been back a couple of times and I've loved it. I just think everything has to be, uh, timing has to be right. So who knows? I'd definitely be open to it. But yeah, timing has to be right. <laughs> thank you so much for coming to see us today Ronan. Thank it's really been a privilege to meet you and i am very proud of the way that you've grown up to be such a wonderful gentleman sir so that's oh, very thank nice you. to see you are lovely take care thank what you you too Hi, everybody happy pride yeah. happy pride <laughs>